All right. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, I'm Mary Ellen Slater. I'm the CEO and founder of RevCap. We're a content marketing agency that specializes in HR tech, insurance, and financial services. I am also an, a bit of like an AI, um, I would say early adopter is what I'm going to call myself because I'm not, a, I'm not a, um, a fan girl, like sort of an unquestioning fan girl. I actually love this technology. I'm very excited about what it's going to do um, inside our profession. And, but I also think that it's important that we talk about how to use it in an ethical, serious way. Um, I've been using these tools now for a couple of years. Um, and so when I'm, I'm beginning with Lately, which is gonna be the first tool that I talk about this morning, and then I've moved on, we've actually incorporated Writer as a strategic move inside our agency. So this is a little bit different from our usual webinars. What I'm not doing here is going through a PowerPoint for an hour um, and sharing examples and all that sort of stuff. I'm literally gonna screen share for you how I do these things. And the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how we use Lately to take so create social copy out of long form existing copy. This is, I think, if you are experimenting with AI in your content, um, this is, I think, I call it a gateway drug, you know, because I watched too many ads in the 80s, you know, um, dare ads. But it's, this is your, I think this is the safest way for many people who haven't used this tech, tech to, to test it out, right? This is your content. How can you get more life out of it? We're told over and over again, you know, make it once and redistribute and adapt. This is, to me, the perfect, perfect place to start. The second thing I'm going to do, a little more complex, I'm going to use Writer to create an SEO blog post. They've got um, kind of an SEO post builder. We're gonna walk through step by step and I'm gonna show you like how I would use it to make a post at RepCap. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna, it take me a little longer to do a full post, but I'm at least walk you through the process and show you where the human comes in, you know, where the AI is helpful, things you gotta watch out for, that sort of thing. And then last but not least, we'll just leave some time at the end there for just an open Q and A where if you want me to go back and say, well, how'd you do that thing? I'll go back and do that thing. Um, I've also got some guests, special guests coming in um, in this conversation. We're going to be bringing them in as we get closer to the actual presentations. I'm very excited. It's some of the folks actually that whose work I really love at both Lately and Writer. So I'm going to pop in and also answer some questions. They're also hanging out in the chat. And so I'm going to be off the screen for much of this presentation. So if you have questions, like ask them in the chat, um, especially if they're product specific, um, they will be able to absolutely answer them lickety split. So that's our agenda. The first thing I want to talk about here actually is like I, I've been working on this a little bit. It's like this is my content marketer's AI manifesto. And one of my rules is, and this this shapes like how I do this work, is when AI creates only humans publish. I know that in a there's a dream for some of us that like, oh yeah, you just automate the whole process. Don't. You need that human review point. You actually don't want things just to make stuff and just go. You always want to build in healthy, appropriate checkpoints. The second one is I know we talk a lot about the bias in AI, which it absolutely is because it's as biased as the humans that it was trained upon. You also have a bias problem. And I find that if we're smart about this, the way that I try to use AI as opposed to amplifying my biases, I use AI to help me counter them, right? And open up and spot for me the patterns that I, I wouldn't have noticed on my own. Right, so you can either use AI to, to basically make your own, amplify your own bias and make your world even more narrow, or you can use it to open it up. The third one, protect your data, okay? ChatGPT is fun. Think of it as like a fun toy. I mean, I also look at it in some ways and I think, man, this is gonna make Cambridge Analytica look like a joke, <laughs> like, depending on how people handle this data. Be very mindful when you're using AI tools, like talk to the people who make the tools that you're using about what happens when you put your data in. Does it get, used to train other models? Like, does it get co-mingled with other random stuff? Those are all questions that you're gonna have to start asking. And I would just say, be very careful about what you put into different things. Um, you know, if you're not paying for it, just remember, if you're not paying for it, you're not the customer, you're the product. So if you're putting them in chat GPT right now, you know, you're the product. So, um, all right. Guard against what I, it's perfect bullshit. And I am using bullshit in the classic philosophical sense, in the Harry Frankfurt sense. I keep this book on my desk at all times. Like, um, some of you know, I used to be a journalist and I think that this is part of like, things can sound great. Um, I think a lot of AI content, what it will generate for you is a lot of very smooth, confident nonsense. Even things, if you ask it to do research for you, you know, that that is not a substitute for good fact-checking. That is not a good substitute for like, 
just decent real plagiarism like you know use your human intuition on top of this like don't if there's no shortcuts here so um anyway and if you haven't read on bullshit i highly recommend it cool so one of the other overall things y'all if you ever come to any of our stuff you'll heard me say this one of the first rules about great content marketing is it has to be differentiated and so one of the problems I'm seeing with some of the early uses of this content where people are all excited about how it's cheap and fast is that it doesn't pass this fundamental rule for me, which is that if I took your content and put it on your competitor's site, could anybody tell the difference? And if all you're doing is shoving content into one of these tools and then stuff comes out and you put that and publish it, you will fail this. I do not know like if it's some version of a Bechdel test or something, but like, People can't tell, and this is going to make this problem worse if you're not thoughtful about this. All right, but this also brings me back to another point where the people who say, oh, this stuff isn't differentiated, it doesn't, the AI doesn't have a voice. Well, God, I hope not. Again, do y'all not watch sci-fi? Like when the AI gets a voice, we are fucked, right? <laughs> like that's not what we're looking for. That's not the goal here. And no, some of you, this is what I died because, you know, Calvin Block does in fact have a voice and I live in the Bible belt and whatever I had this, the part where he was like, hit my brother in Christ, like I died, I just died, but it's true. So work on having a voice, AI or not, because some of y'all, y'all, y'all got a lot of ideas, interesting ideas about AI, but you don't, uh, you have no idea what's coming, but you also don't seem to have any really good ideas about your content. So, all right. So how do I do this? So that's, I'm gonna now kind of pop off screen um, and I'm gonna go pop over to Lately and show you what I do on Lately. All right, so I mentioned that Lately, for those of you who haven't seen this before, is a content, it's a social tool that will allow you to take your long form content and create short form content. And when I, I actually was watching lately for a while, you know, in terms of when we first started working with it and like notice, I noticed that like I would put the content in and 50% uh, of what came out I could use with a little editing. And then like a few months went by and I'm like, hmm, okay, 70% of this is usable. Oh, okay, now 80% of this is usable. I would now say that between 80 and 90% of what lately gives me out of a well-structured blog post is usable with like with some light editing. That's amazing. Like if my job is to take you write one big long piece of content and that is the secret though. It, it does its best work. It's garbage in garbage out. If your original long form piece is awesome, you will get awesome AI like adapted content from it. If your original piece is nonsense, it, the computer is no better at reading all that than, than we are as humans. Um, so I like to use it this way. So as an example, I'm going to take, this is a, a blog post, like a rep cap, we call them a pillar post. And I wrote one on how to create a thought leadership program. So what I would do here, if I wanted to run a campaign in support of our thought leadership consulting, and I was like, oh, I've got this original piece and I want to just get some good social post out of it. So I would come over here. You can either copy and paste it into the blog, into this link. You could also just straight up copy paste stuff in here in long form. Um, I love that y'all gave us some ideas and things to post from. And then I'm gonna hit generate. And now it's thinking. And while it's thinking, <laughs> you're like, wait, how's the machine taking this much time? Um, this also kind of cracks me up. So this is gonna come back. It's going through um, looking at what I gave it, you know, that whole post and that whole post is like, it's a good 2000 words long. And then I asked it to give me LinkedIn posts because the only social channel that RepCap manages like for our own marketing is LinkedIn. Lately can absolutely do Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as well. Um, this is just the choice that we made to like focus strictly on this channel. So that's what I'm asking it for. And it's still thinking. I think that some of this thinking is actually a function of uh, my internet right now, but. Come on now, it's just teasing me. 
while that's generating, I'm going to come show you what the original post looked like. So this is a long form piece. It's got an intro. It's got three clear headers. You know, it's got a thesis. This is what I mean by making sure that what you feed in is well structured. So this is where like SEO posts in particular are really good at this because if they're strong, then they already have these kind of this kind of hierarchy to it. This is a post that performs very well just on its own, like it ranks on these on these terms. So, all right, let's go see if it's, ah, it's still thinking on me. I just refresh this. I think that's a me problem, not a, not a lately problem. Ah, uh, yes, okay, so, Lately also allows you to, it's, you connect it to the publisher. And in this case, it's connected to my personal LinkedIn and as well as our pages. You can also connect it to, if you have HubSpot, you can connect it directly to HubSpot. If you use Hootsuite, it also integrates with Hootsuite. So here's where I start looking through now. It's given me 10 posts. Um, this first thing this is where, again, what I mean by like, it's not quite perfect. I wouldn't just hit send on this, right? Because it's after all that it picked up is not quite right. So I would edit this, right? Just to tighten it up a little. That's actually pretty good, y'all. Now, you can also see that my friends at Lately are also nudging me over here to add some emojis and add a hashtags and attachments and, and add mention people. So I'm not gonna do mentions on this just because it's not quite appropriate, but I do appreciate that I'm getting nudged about this, right? So for what are gonna be my hashtags? I'm gonna add um, content marketing, internal comms, um, communications. I'm just kind of making stuff up right now. Um, and, and you can see now it says, aha, thank you. You added a hashtag. I'm not going to put, um, actually, maybe I will. Uh, let's see, who could I tag here? I'm going to tag RedCap. Just tag myself, just so y'all can see how that happens. OK, so anyway. So now I have a post and if I wanted to go schedule this, like, so this one, I feel pretty good about. Go ahead lately, schedule it for me. Put it on my own post, put it like, just post this on my own feed. And now I walk over, I want, you know, you can come see all my LinkedIn. <laughs> like, told y'all this is going to be like watching paint dry. It's probably not actually up there yet because I think there's like some optimizing on the scheduling. So, but so if I went over there, then it would, it would schedule it. Now I'm going to look again. What else did they give me? This one isn't quite holding up because it missed the first part, which as the human, I know that as this is talking about the SEO piece, um, I could, since I know that as the person, I could use that. Or let's move on. Let's just kind of see. Maybe there's something else I like better because I don't need them all, right? Um, this one, it didn't quite, it look, it looks like it kind of put this in here. Hmm. So, but all I really had to do was take a sentence off. This is pretty good, y'all. <laughs> like, right? So now I can go ahead and schedule this one too if I wanted. Um, all of them. So in the end, when this is over, I took that one piece and I would say it gave me 10. Oh, it's still giving me more. See, right? So it's still generating stuff. It, like, I can just keep looking through this knowing that I want like five or six. Like, what I like about this is that whenever I do it as a human, I actually have a tendency to only grab the top, right? I tend to just grab whatever my lead was, whatever my thesis was. And like, but there's all these other words, like it's sort of down through it. It's like the, the AI helps me find the other good stuff. Here's another one, templates and checklists. Um, I 
that's that's actually an inherently decent post in and of itself, right? And you'll notice, like, this is part of the a. This is part of the nudge. This is part of the nudge. Go look at this. Like, they're going to flag this for you. So that's, I'm going to like, that's, that is basically, that is the gist of it. Like, and you could do that over and over and over again. If you go take a look here in the history, I can put that in. I can also generate it again. If I didn't like it at all, for some reason, I could have it do it all over again. But I have so many, I have 50 posts to review potentially. Um, I did another one last night as I was just kind of practicing to, to do this in public today. I put in one of our posts about email newsletters and it gave me 50 posts. This is a good one. So if you're trying to figure out like how to get your like SMEs to post things, you know, if some of you in bigger companies, you're trying to figure out what you're going to feed into, um, you know, your social sharing team, like for your sales team, you know, they often people want to share stuff. They don't know what to share. This is one way you can kind of generate that volume for them. This is pretty good. I mean, I got to do, a, I got to do a little tweaking, but that's better than starting all over from scratch. Yeah, here we go. It's like, this is about referral. So I'm going to come back. I'm probably going to use this stuff. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm going to go and probably schedule some more of that. Um, the other real quick thing that I'm going to show you on lately before I, I bring in one of my, my, my guest visitors here is um, you can also put in um, videos and audio. So this is a slightly different um, sort of a different tier on it. Um, and this is something we've been experimenting with more. Um, this is a fairly new feature. Um, you know, I can let like our, our guest speaker come and talk about this a little bit, but like you can put in an entire video or a, or a podcast episode. So you can put in audio, you can put in video and it will go through and actually help you find the snippets. And again, you still have to edit, but like, it's really nice to have a jump start from the AI on like, this is a snippet that goes from 203 to 258. And I could hit play and listen to this. I could see like what, you know, it's gonna tell me where it starts. Right? It did the cut for me. And I can still tweak it a little and then I can when it's done. So for those of you who have like, who do a lot of multimedia where you've got Maybe you've got um, SMEs that you support that do podcasts and you want to figure out how to get more social content. Maybe you have a podcast that you want to get more content out of. Maybe you're doing a lot of videos, like um, one of the things you also see. So you see Ryan Estes is one of the folks that dropped in here. He's a longtime friend. He's a keynote speaker. He generates an insane amount of very good content in the form of video and audio that this tool allows us to quickly adapt that into things for his social. So it's pretty cool, right? I'm gonna pop out actually for here just a second, see if I can answer some questions for y'all. And I see that Kate is here with me. So <laughs> um, I can, I also can't, I keep forgetting, I, I can't not call you Kate Lee. <laughs> so you're forever branded. So thank you, Kate, for joining us. So, so yeah. So tell me, how was that demo? Would you? Could I work? It here? was so <laughs> cool. like, We literally made a whole bunch of those changes like in the last two weeks, and I haven't seen some of them live. So I was sort of shaking a little bit. I was like, Oh my god! Oh my god! Is it going to work? Yeah, <laughs> I was wondering that too. Now, <laughs> I, was like, that's why I, I was happy I practiced last night because I'm not. You know, the main people on the team that use this, like Grace McGrath, our social person, the writers use it. It, it's pretty deeply integrated in our process. It's like it was from pretty much the get go. Thank you so you much know, from the time. Let me know when you're ready to run sales for me, okay, Mary Ellen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. But I mean, it's like no. Actually, I don't want. I told. I think I told you once before too. It's like, well, I feel like it's my secret weapon, and I'm always torn. It's like, do I want to tell people about this? <laughs> well, what I like so much that you, you know, we struggle with it, what you had said so well, which is like, how do you get people to understand that the human element is essential? right? Mm -hmm. And that light editing, like those little bits, because it's funny, people want magic still, Mary Ellen, right? Mm -hmm. part of the problem that's story. magic. That's still magic. <laughs> it's some magic, just for sure. You know, it's not totally hands-free, but, yeah. but, but it makes a difference, right? So, so as you said, it, 
learned over time to get better and better because you helped it do that specifically. Hmm. And, and that's the argument we're trying to, it's not just about being ethical. I mean, yes, of course we want to be ethical, but we want the results uh-huh. and the results when a humans partner up with the AI beat the pants off just the AI alone. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's the way I look at it too, because what I liked about it, this comes back to my rule about use it to like, so overcome your bias. It found things that I wouldn't have found. Right. That was that. And that's big for me because otherwise I'm just, sometimes people talk about repurposing content and they think that means posting the same thing over and over and over. That's actually not what that means. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I I did this by the way. So I, I did this for Walmart by hand like 15 years ago and Uh It was the same kind of idea. Somebody had to write social. Nobody wanted to because the approval process with Walmart was like months and months and months. And so I was like, but we're writing all these great blogs. What if we lifted out sentences as teasers and just put a short link back to the full and I could get easily 40 posts in an hour and they've already been approved by Walmart because we've got the blog approved already. And then what if we trickled them out over time? So like we posted one a week for every for whatever, 40 weeks. And then you have that like exponential drip feed coming back at you Mm -hmm. like a waterfall, you know, over and over. So it's like a crazy mindset that I think marketers, you know, we're so stuck in being in the moment Mm -hmm. and that's changed. It's Mm -hmm. post-mo where you get the most um, kind of bang for your buck nowadays, right? Yeah. The other thing I would say, and I didn't pull this up, but I, cause we use co-schedule. So y'all have an integration yeah, cool. with Hootsuite and you have an integration with HubSpot from a product roadmap. That makes sense to me. That captures a lot of, a lot of business. We use co-schedule and it's pretty core to how we do this. Awesome. And I don't know if those of you, I can also pull co-schedule if people are curious about it, but it, I, I still go over and I do the human thing cause I don't have an integration, you know, feature quest like that we will work on that and co-schedule. Um, but but co-schedule the whole concept is that you made it once right in fact actually i am going to do have you have you seen co-schedule no show me i, I love this okay I'm all right okay good. I'm gonna, okay i'm going to show everybody co-schedule now too. <laughs> this is awesome. because it's actually really this is pretty critical to that model that i was just describing should i jump um, off too do you want to just jump in no 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 you can okay. stay on i'll okay. be real quick about this i'll be no very quick about it great um I'm gonna we, not even take we just need people to keep asking us for the integration with CoSchedule and I'll put it on the list. So we're doing Sprinkler right, right. now. And uh, you know, okay, we, so we wanted go. to yeah. do Scout Social, but they don't, they're not doing an open API right now. So. Okay. so let's see, let's go look at one of these that we said, well, we knew this was really good um, and we liked it. Oh, this was a good one. Okay, so what I would do here is I would actually just copy this and then co-schedule is our scheduling tool. And in co-schedule, what you would do is you essentially think of content in that campaign sense. So if you've got a blog post, you don't just make a blog post and it's just hanging out there, right? Like a, you don't just like post on social, like you were just describing this idea that I posted once is not what we would do here. So like, I'll give you an example it's actually a good one, potentially. Um, I think some, okay. So we actually did post these and these were all written with, with lately, right? So this link to this, that email newsletter post, mm-hmm. then we schedule all the social posts that go with it. They all get scheduled at one time. Cool. So, and I can say, run this a week from now, run this a month from now, run this three months from now, and they all get put in here. That drip feed. So and, and so they're generated with lately copied over here and then i can look at the whole campaign right i can see how all the content did exactly. yeah. um and you can just have things in the ideas this is drag and drop awesome so if you like something or if you want to let's say you're not bound just because we said oh i'm going to run it on this day but what if i change my mind and i don't want to run it here i want to run this this day mm-hmm. i love it so that's what we do with CoSchedule. Um, and so it's like sort of like a social platform, like a, like a Hootsuite or a Sprout Social, but it's also a little bit like, you know, most of us as content marketers make this in a spreadsheet. This replaces yeah. a lot of spreadsheets for me. We, um, not to be a commercial, but so in our, our enterprise product has all of that exact feature. So there's a full calendar that you can drag and drop and um, you can upload and download and all that kind of stuff. So um but it's a different, it's a bit of a different beast. Like there's, you know, 
Explain yeah, no, I, I figured that probably, yeah. So there are different sort of levels. I know somebody asked in here about the pricing or whatever, and it's like if it's free and low cost. I consider the sort of entry level version, it's not free, but it, I consider it inexpensive. Like I consider it, I will tell you that lately was probably the most high, the highest ROI software purchase that I made. <laughs> like, oh God. I like, just, I literally. The history of this business, and I know you're going to raise the prices <laughs> at some point, but for now. <laughs> I just told my customer service team to send you some brownies on us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just like, you're so great. Thank you so much for. for yeah. This. So um, look, I want to talk. I know I want to show everybody how to do the stuff with the writer too, but like, tell me, you were talking about working at Walmart. This solved a real problem for you. This came oh, yeah. out of like your problem. It did. Like, it was a combination of Walmart. And then I don't know if you know this about me, Mary Ellen, but I used to be a rock and roll DJ. So my last gig was broadcasting to 20 million listeners a day for XM, Satellite Radio. Mm. And my Uber power was turning listeners into fans or customers into evangelists. And so what we did with Lately was we took the Walmart problem, but we wanted to amp it up because it's not, as you know, it's not enough just to put great content out there. You want content mm -hmm. that converts, number one, and content that creates use, right? You are what I want. I want many, many more of you. So how do I do that? What I was thinking about with music is there's, this is complicated, so forgive me, but there's, um, with writing and, and, and radio, there's a parallel. There's a th theater of the mind is required, right? So when uh -huh. you read something and then when you're listening, you have to fill in the blanks with your own imagination. That's the human element. That's the, the un unknown element, right? As an author, it's your job to guide people along and fill in the story as you're going, but give them the room to do that. And it's the same if you're a good DJ, you're making this two way street. It feels like you have a role in my conversation. Mm -hmm. So here's how this ties in. When you listen to a new song, your brain must instantly access every other song you've ever heard in that instant. And it's looking for familiar touch points. So it knows where to index the new song in the library of the memory of your brain. Similarly, your voice, Mary Ellen, has a frequency like a song. There's a note, mm -hmm. the sound of your voice. So when I read what you write, I hear it in my head. Now, in both of those cases, that idea of listening to music and, and categorizing it pulls forth nostalgia and memory and emotion by accident. It just happens as part of the default. Mm -hmm. When you write, if you are writing to trigger those same cues, all of which... Let, let trust happen. They have to be there for trust to happen. This is how you reach people in a way that starts to get them to evangelize for you. Mm -hmm. right? So when lately it's clipping out that content for you, it's looking for these kinds of ideas in what you write to make it so compelling that people can't help themselves but click comment and share. Mm -hmm. It does. It finds the, it definitely finds the better stuff, and it finds stuff that I wouldn't have found. Like I wouldn't have I wouldn't have necessarily picked those things. Um, but I also want to say, I also really appreciate something else you, you were talking about earlier about getting it through um, you know, when you were in corporate, like how like <laughs> getting it through compliance. Okay. Because like these readers, so, I mean, it is, it's like, how do you maintain that voice and make it interesting? So you're plucking out the parts that are genuinely interesting. You're, but you're also staying because it, again, it's grounded in your content that you made. This isn't just, this is comes back to the, like, you, my brother in Christ did not have an original. <laughs> it's like, right. This, it's not this actually to... starts with your voice. If, for, if you, if you do have your voice nailed, this is what I mean by like, if you've got good content, like if you're a good content person, like you're just trying to figure out like, well, how, and you're being asked to do more with less. I'm seeing that a lot right now. It's like teams are, there's yes. only a lot of squeeze, especially on the tech side. Um, this market is, is crazy, but it's like, if you're being asked to do that and you've got to figure out how to do it, you don't get to hire another person, you know, but you also want to increase share of voice. You want to be posting more often, you know, with your, this is a way to do it with intention and it will also make it through compliance. With intention. Yes, exactly. And, <laughs> like, you know, on this, and I don't know if it was here or online, but it's lazy isn't going to cut it. Right. Mm hmm. So that intention has to be part of the work that you're doing, right? So AI isn't meant to just, I, I think of cliff notes. There's such a parallel here. Remember, uh -huh. remember cliff notes, right? Uh -huh. And teachers caught on to that real quick. You couldn't just copy the cliff notes, but you could use it as like a way to better understand the book if you also read the book. Uh -huh. you know? And it's, it's really similar. So it's, it's curious to me how much people are trying to cheat right now with AI. Um, 
and why they would want to, right? Like, what's well, those people were bad writers anyway. I mean, I want <laughs> yeah. to say this though. Ross Simmons said something also that I, that really stuck with me. Where he was like, "You give a great content marketer AI, and you're going to get really great content and a lot more of it. You give like a bad one." Guess an AI, and you're going to get a lot of bad content and a lot more of it. <laughs> and it's already happening, right? Yeah. It's oh, just... it's so painful. I mean, it's also you can tell the ones that are like 10 prompts to ask Chat GPT to write your next <laughs> blog post. And I'm like, did you use Chat GPT to write this? Um, you can tell. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I, my, my like fun stuff in like those tools is I like to ask it. The other day, we were talking about the, I was talking with a friend about the new, um, avatar movie and he said something about lava navi but i read it as lava nazis and i was like lava nazis the new james cameron film and so i was like write a script overview outline for a movie about lava nazis produced by james cameron and chat gpt did write me that beautiful perfect bullshit (laughs) and that's all it to be that's all it's good for now the other thing then i said rewrite it in this it was hilarious and i said rewrite it in the style of christopher nolan and oh my I got god a warning i got a warning that said christopher nolan does not approve of the use of it i'm like hey, oh christopher, really chris nolan went and <laughs> you can't even use Who got mad? His name wow yeah it did not Regardless. like it did not so i do think artists will i guess i'm not really that surprised that christopher nolan was the like get my shit out of this model like you know <laughs> like, you will not make inception like with this so like, this is, like he, he probably thought about ai enough that like, <laughs> like you know that's funny about that so i actually use voice activated software to do all my computing mary ellen so i i have a i i don't type at all i'm, I'm hands-free and, and so this is dragon naturally speaking which actually powers siri so there's some ai involved uh-huh. and i don't make typos ever i make sound alike typos so for example it, it will often hear the word vcs venture capitalists as uh-huh. feces <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, don't send that email. Don't send, don't send. That actually yeah. was, it was something that Ann Handley posted the other day where it was I like, it replaced her. something with the word urine. Yes, <laughs> that, was so like, oh, no. that was so hilarious. I read that post. It was so, and it was so, you know, totally true. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what you said. You have to catch the guardrails. And, and you know, we'd, we'd seen a lot of people on LinkedIn getting really upset about this, this type of idea, right? Huh? The fear of AI and... I just wanted to, before we, you know, move into the next thing is talk about where AI, at least in our world, which is content generation is on the, on the lifespan. So first Mm -hmm. of all, everybody think of AI as a human and think of it as three months old. So humans are the only mammals. When we, when we come out of the womb, we're totally helpless. We can't feed ourselves. We can't walk. We can't defend ourselves. And so if AI is only three months, it also requires, you know, loving care to do things. Right. So I want to kind of abate the the freak out about around that. It's it's there's no car driving. There's no, you know, I know you keep saying that you're not you're trying to say this to reassure me, but I just picture you there with the little baby dragon, you know, from Game of Thrones going, It's just the baby. I took a compliment to that. (laughs) (laughs) It's just it is just a baby. You know, so here's another great example that I like so much. So remember, okay, Betty Crocker, cake in a box, right? Uh When we first invented that, it was all all you had to do was add water, was all powder. And the housewives at the time didn't feel like they made a cake. There was no ownership in this, so it didn't sell. So they took the powdered eggs out and they made it so you had to have eggs. And then it sold like hotcakes because the humans had a role in the process. Mm-hmm. Got it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nobody wants that. So, all right. So I'm going to pop over. Um, yeah. I want you to stick around for a little bit. I'm going to go do the writer piece. Um, I'm going to show everybody. This one's really going to feel like magic. <laughs> They're really gonna, and then we can all come back, come back together. And I want to let y'all know I do have some folks from Writer on here too, like Rachel and Ryan have also joined us. It's similarly kind of answer some questions. So I'm gonna pop off screen, and now y'all are gonna get to see me um, walk through at a high level um, how we would, how we use this to make a blog post because it's not. Um, this is a more complex process, right? So Writer is a more complex tool. Um, in fact, that does a lot more things. So Writer not only and I want to just say the writer is a strategic investment for us as an agency. Um, it is a SOC 2 compliant platform that allows me to, to confidently, comfortably use AI for content generation um, and content support for, you know, I work in financial services and insurance and HR tech. Like I'm not, I, I need like, a, I need a walled garden. And so writer gave me my walled garden. It also replaces Grammarly. 
So, and I think some there's some of the functionality that you saw in lately is in writer. Um, I, I don't imagine, I have a hard time imagining us not ever having, but just because lately is that specialty tool. It's so fast for that exact thing you want it done. Writer is my Grammarly, and like it's so many other things. So snippets and like, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Brand guides that we train for the client. Um, all right, what I'm gonna show you is there's a plat tool in here called CoWrite. And CoWrite comes with templates. This is AI generated and you're gonna see up here at the top, this Ask Writers AI Anything, this is your chat GPT type equivalent. You know, you can put stuff in here and ask it to do things. You can also ask it to give you blog headlines. You can have it give you outlines. You can ask it to write a case study for you. I mean, you still have to describe it, put some things in here. Um, you can dump a bunch of stuff in and have it summarize it. You can use it to generate ideas for, if you have ideas for an email, but you're not loving it, like it can tell you some different ideas. Um, one of my favorite things that I've been using Writer for is actually we're growing as an agency. You know, we had eight people a year ago. Now we have 20, you know, it's like we're essentially on track to double again in size this year if we want to, <laughs> like, which is, that's a deeper question. But um, what I'm finding is like, we had to write a bunch of SOPs and SOPs went from some being something that took me three hours, four hours to get all this tacit knowledge out of my head to I wrote one using um, writer as support in under an hour because it just gave me, helped me give me the structure. It helped me think of things I didn't think of to include, which is the most important. Like, again, that's part of the, use it not just to do stuff and send it along, use it to like prompt you. So. This is probably one of the things that will most freak people out, but also I think can really, really help you turn out a certain type of content at a higher volume, but we don't just put stuff in. So like, here's what, and this is where this is also a bit different from some of the other tools. I think there was a question in there where people asked me if I had tested other tools. I have tested all the other tools and I'm not going to talk about them in here <laughs> because, because I didn't use them and I'm, I'm just not bringing that kind of energy my Friday, but I have a lot of questions. There, there's a reason we chose these two, and it mostly comes down to ethics, ethical leadership, and transparent leadership around how they're developing the tech. Um, I think in addition to Kate, you know, Mehabib is the CEO of Writer, and she has also put herself in the forefront of having serious conversations about using this tech the right way, um, and that's really important to me. Um, I like their roadmaps. I like everything. It's, it's more about the Honestly, frankly, it's about the philosophy and also the approach to customer service. But yeah, I've tested all of them. So, all right. So what are we going to write about? I'm going to write a, a blog post about how to write an email newsletter. And this is where, I mean, I really would, you're watching me do this very rough. And I'm going to change it to how to write an awesome email newsletter. Um, if I didn't like this title, I could actually use it to generate some alternatives for me. Because again, maybe I'm just feeling kind of stuck. Oh, I kind of like, kind of liking this, like, let's go with that expert's guide. That sounds good. Um, let's, so uh, what do I want to optimize it for? Email newsletter, uh, we'll call it like guide, like tips and tricks or something, or like best practices, that's what I'll say. And again, I'm, you know, I'm probably a little more thoughtful in my prompts if I weren't doing this like on the clock here with you. Um, what's the CTA? What I want them to do? Like sign up for our newsletter. Yeah. All right. So now after putting this in, I'm going to hit outline and it's going to think for a minute. Oh yeah. It thought for a minute. So what should go in here? So now what I just, if I wanted, I could just hit key points and go on. But again, I'm a human who knows this topic really well. And I do have some sense of the points that I want to make when I'm writing. So a section on why they're still relevant. That sounds good. I think I would like that. Um, what makes a great newsletter? I, that's not quite what I wanted. You know, I think I might uh, give me something different. Reword this. What makes an email newsletter great? Um, that's all right. I think I'll take that. Um, I think what I'm missing, I'm like, ah, oh, you know what's missing here is like how to write a great email copy.
and it doesn't matter the lowercase, uppercase. It's like none of that stuff matters to me right now. So, and then I, I know I want this to go. Um, and I want to add one more section. I want to see some examples. narrow it down a little bit even. I'm gonna say B to B. So I mean you can see I I used it. There were some things I probably wouldn't on my own have written the template. I wouldn't have said, oh how to design the template. I wouldn't have put that in there. I'm a copy first person, right? So I probably would have like done that like first. Um, so it caught something that I didn't necessarily think of. It kind of got me through all the basic obvious stuff. Um, and now this is this is kind of interesting, right? Like this isn't a bad outline. Now I'm gonna go to key points. So when I go to key points, this is now going to, this one I feel like this one usually takes like a hot minute, but again, sometimes I feel so ridiculous being impatient about this because this, let's be real y'all, this would have taken me 30 minutes to get to this point, maybe an hour. Um, and I'm a fast writer, I'm a newspaper writer. So why are they still, newspapers still relevant? This is actually, see, to me, this doesn't match. This is not the argument for why they are still relevant. That's off. I'm gonna regenerate, I'm gonna give it another chance. Try again, AI. Now that is akin to what I was looking for. But I would consider these two things kind of the same thing. And I'd probably just merge them. So I've got saying top of mind, I'm building relationships, I'm driving traffic back to my site and I'm generating leads. Um, now, that's not bad. Maybe I might think of some other things I might want to add. What makes an great email newsletter great? Okay, it's well written, well designed, relevant to the audience, timely and interesting. I, you know, I have a model that I often use where I just I say, you know, is it accurate? Is it relevant? Is it interesting? And I I might say this is might be what the AI told me. Let's see. I actually don't think timely is actually that important. Like, I mean, I think a lot of newsletters, we think we hear newsletter and we think it's like literally news, but it's not. So let's say it must be, um, and this is me, right? This is where I'm getting into like my framework. Let's see how well it handles it. So it must be accurate, must be relevant, must be interesting. Let's see what it does with that. Um, how to write great email copy, clear, concise to the point. Oh, easy to point to that to me is that these now are not getting into like, I don't think these are as good. It's like, try again. Because what I'm looking for here are steps, right? Now it just repeated what was up there. That's not good either. And again, I want to be clear, this is like, remember thinking about the time here, it's like, it's easy to be like, oh, that was so bad. But it was like, how long would it have taken you to say that? Um, so why are they still relevant? Did I just hit the wrong button? I hit the wrong button. So I kind of screwed that up. I'll keep that there. What makes an email newsletter great? Um, how to write great email. Okay, here we go. I need a good subject line, short paragraphs, image spare. Yep. Okay, now we're good. Actually, I'll take that. How to design an email newsletter template. Yeah, that's pretty good. There's something about being on brand, right? All right, so how to promote it. That kind of showed up in a weird way. Okay, email newsletter tools. So those aren't really tools and resources. I would call those like 
ways to publish your newsletter, whatever, I'll leave it. But let's see, now we've got three great uh, inspiration. This isn't what I wanted at all. This is where I'm probably gonna have to be human, okay? I'm gonna say Hung Lee's recruiting brain food. I'm gonna say Ann Handley. And who else's newsletter do I love? Um, let's see, what's another good one? I mean, sorry, I read a lot of newsletters. I feel like I need to pick somebody whose newsletter that cracks me up. Um, People Geekly. I'm gonna pick Culture Amp. All right. This is an outline. And I'm hitting generate draft. I might get up and go get my coffee, make refill my coffee while it's thinking. I think while this is um and while this is loaded, I think what Ryan and Rachel, why don't one of y'all y'all can pop back on? We can kind of chat about this a little bit. This does take a minute, and again, I feel ridiculous when I say that it's taking a minute, because this would take me an hour <laughs> to write, and I'm like sitting here getting annoyed that like it needs 30 seconds. Like, what has happened? Like, what has happened to me? <laughs> it's your new norm, right? You're not used to having to wait around for things anymore. Yeah, you want things right away. <laughs> right? It's like, because I feel ridiculous every time I say it. I mean, it does just, it does take a minute, like this part. Um, but I think when I think about what we've asked it to do, it's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So while it's loading, um, why don't y'all, y'all can just take a second um, and kind of talk a little bit about, about how you built this. Like, because I know that this wasn't something that y'all just rolled out out of the gate. Like, Hobart's fairly new. Yeah. And you were pretty, the team was pretty intentional in the product and like, and how this got built. So like, let's um talk, talk us through that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I'll back up. You mentioned the Grammarly competitor piece. So for most people to know, we really launched focused on helping you write on brand content initially. So we were very mm -hmm. focused on getting your style guide into writer, having you be able to apply that style guide to all of your content. So this isn't just spell checking and those normal grammar use cases. This is also writing on brand terms. This is speaking in the way that your brand wants to speak. And mm -hmm. so that was the initial iteration of the product. And in about August of last year, we launched CoWrite. And CoWrite really was our attempt to continue the writing process, give you everything from ideation to writing to editing, and then get you all the way to publication and be publication ready. Um, what you just saw with the blog post builder, what I really want to note there is it's about intentionality. And I think we talked about that earlier as well, too. This mm -hmm. is not asking you to have a very unstructured prompt and then come up with copy that you probably really have to massage and spend a lot of time on. This is you thinking about every step of the way in your writing process. What would I be doing right now? I'd be creating an outline. I'd be confirming what my topics and key points are and then producing content from that. So with a human in the driver's seat, as we like to say, your content is going to be a lot better. And so we've structured this process in such a way that there's guardrails to help you produce your best content. Therefore, you've got a great first draft to work with at this point. Every step of the way, you're getting good content and you can edit it like we just saw in your time. So I popped it. I popped it back up. It's done. So they gave me this, and now I'm going to hit use this draft. Now, would I go over and just publish this as is? Absolutely not. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, However, yeah. this isn't bad content. I mean, you can see if y'all see over on the right hand side, we talked about being the sort of the grammarly piece. So the other things I really like about writer is it is doing like spelling and grammar. Terms are a thing that we flag. I mean, similar Grammarly will do that for you. Clarity, delivery. The inclusivity piece is another one that we really appreciate for the type of content that we do. Um, I really love that it actually that it flags like, hey, why does this say he? Are you sure it's a he? <laughs> like, you know, it flags like certain terms as like being not, yeah, hey, this isn't like a term that you probably want to use so people could find it offensive. I find that really helpful. Um, snippets is where we get into things like something you might write all the time like your boilerplate around your company you know but look this wrote me the first draft of 13 almost 1300 words and i mean that was work that would have taken me 45 minutes an hour to get here and now 
I'm going to go through, this is definitely not my voice exactly, right? I mean, this is, there's so many here, I was like, we're talking about cursing or, earlier. I was like, this has no curse words in it. <laughs> so obviously, I didn't write it. I need to fix that, yeah. Obviously, I didn't write it, but it's not a bad start. You know, I would do some things where I tighten up some language. I would fit it, align it with our messaging. I have certain ways that I would want to talk about it. You know, um, this piece is the weakest like this one it did not really pick up what i mean this is just sort of being like very real like being very real about this like i told it what newsletters i liked it did not write up the newsletters that i gave us like so that was too far like that was mm -hmm. a step too far so like for me i'm now going to need to come in here and like it gave me three great examples but these were not the examples i wanted to highlight you know it gave me very obvious like salesforce hubspot marketo so what I would say is if as, you know, as you're wielding this, like know that like you got your structure started and then you're like, ew, no, those aren't the three examples I want to highlight. And you'd rewrite that part. But that's a hell of a lot better than starting completely from scratch. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's kind of the point. I mean, we talked earlier uh -huh. about you know, bad writers, if they're able to use this, it's just going to continue to be bad content that's coming out. Uh -huh. great writers, this is going to augment your team. This is going to help you do things faster and at scale, but you're still going to have that human element. You're still going to apply your touch to it. You're going to look at what makes sense and what doesn't make uh -huh. sense. It's like, we like to think about this as just helping great writers continue to be great writers. And they can potentially be a learning tool for less quality writers to improve their writing ability as they go. Uh -huh. Another function in here, like let's say I had something like this and I wanted to summarize it. You know, sometimes we have to, um, when we're doing, we're building like um, site maps, right? And you have like, you have an SEO strategy. You want to make sure you're writing a post. It's a long post, but you have another post where you touch on the topic and you want to link out to it, but you don't want to like, you can't be literally the same copy. So sometimes what I'll do for those is I might do say, I might say something like, say, summarize this post in a few paragraphs. And it's a blog post, right? So I'm just going to say, like, give me, actually, I'm going to tell it, I'll be a little more precise. The better your prompts are, the better things are. That's, I'm going to tell it in 250 words. And this is where I'm not even using it to write my whole post, but I know I need this little bit of content to drop into something. I, I might also use it to say, research a certain thing for me. You know, look, so now it's summarized it for me. And now I can grab this, pull it over into my new blog post and edit. That shaves like 15 minutes off of my work. It's incredible. It's incredible. And this right? is the writer piece that you were talking about earlier. This is kind of the free form, unstructured prompts that you can put in here and uh -huh. URL and generate anything that you want coming out of it. So um, what do you find yourself using the most? Is it the blog post builder? Um, no, it's actually interesting. Like I use that ask anything a lot to okay. do, um, to ask free. I will be working on a blog post and I will use ask anything to write pieces of content for me, mm. like just chunks where I already know what I want to say. And it will solve, like, I know that James and I were chatting about this the other day, our head of editorial. It was like, he had something and we needed to build out a section. And it's like, sometimes you just need to build out a section and you can go ask it for things like, I think I asked it to find me research on the problems with brainstorming as a work you know, system. And it gave me like Harvard stuff. It gave me, gave me decent. I mean, there were like of the five things it gave me, three of them were good and I used them. Yeah. I would have been Googling for that and like, and then having to summarize it. So I definitely use it to pull into little pieces. The other thing is the blog builder. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely use that. Um, Sometimes if I'm stuck on things, so um, if I, we did something, we were working on a webinar title and I had something and it wasn't feeling right and I put it in there and I asked it to give me like three, like, or five alternatives. I, I did and, that before. we're sending an email out and I did not like our email subject line and came up with 10 new alternatives just because uh -huh. my brain was not firing properly this morning. So no, and it helped me. And then this is what I mean by like, instead of amplifying your bias, right? So sometimes we train the models and we just train it to do, to be more of like how we are. You can use it. If you're not feeling like you want to generate new, your, if your new idea part of your brain isn't there, ask the AI to get, help you get new ideas. Mm -hmm. If the structural part of your brain, like the, we use, we use the whole brain thinking HBDI model, basically like, but if you can't, if you're having trouble getting started with an outline, 
use it to generate the outline, right? <laughs> like, um, this will even write emails for you. Like you can start and say, like, if you need to write sales emails or you're like, if you're just stuck on what to talk about, like, let's say you're working on a drip campaign and you've got the white paper, you've got the guide and you've got the long form piece. And now you've got to go write three emails that help kind of push people toward that guy. You can ask this to write your email. And again, you're not going to run it as is. You're, you're going to, but it's, it'll get you started. Mm -hmm. Those of you whose content jobs are also you're responsible for help centers and FAQs, like, you know, and you're behind, this could get you not behind. Not for sure. Raylan, do you use the, uh, have you used the rewrite feature much as well, too? I was thinking about yes. that when you were working on your blog post. Oh, yeah. Let's go look at rewrite. because The rewrite thing is interesting. I... I used it, what did I use it for? I used it for something last night where the way I most likely use rewrite is frankly in the more, um, it's almost in more of the Grammarly-ish kind of sense. Mm -hmm. So let's see, I don't want to tinkle. I want to go back to my, I can actually show you that. Let's look at it in here. This is a good place to check this. By the way, this is also a, a Chrome extension. So you would use this mm -hmm. and there's a, you would be doing it in your Google Docs. I'm doing it inside this platform for now just to make it easy, but Let's see, where's something where it's a clarity? Here's how I mostly use it here. So that's easy. I can switch that one. I want something where it tells me that a sentence is like, here we go, reduce wordiness. No, that's not, that's not wordy enough. Um, <laughs> like I wanted like, um, uh, here's a good one. That's a good one where it wants me to simplify a sentence. So, you know, sometimes we, we get in here, we've got two complicated sentences. And then this pops up, rewrite. I can ask it now to either simplify that sentence for me or polish it or shorten it or enrich it. It's telling me you don't, you can't do anything for me. You told me it was a bad sentence though. <laughs> maybe, we could, uh, maybe we could shorten or uh, polish that one up a little bit then. Yeah, no, but I mean, that always comes up. Yeah, so like what you can do is then okay, swipe on it, pick the thing. It also, sometimes it might've just been like loading. I think my internet's being a little goofy today. So let's go to polish. Oh, I think, um, there, we, there go. we go, there we go. So I can shorten it, I can polish it, I can enrich it and like, it'll give me suggestions on how to rewrite this. And I think this I like, because I like the way that you've positioned this in here. You're saying rewrite. So SimRush also put this rewrite tool inside their writing assistant, except the vibe I got was like, you know, bad SEO writing where it's like people are just chasing, you know, hey, we'll just do whatever the first 10 people are, make sure we use all their words. And then, but we have to rewrite it so we're not plagiarizing. This yeah. is not a rewrite this sentence so you're not plagiarizing a tool. Like, you know, the barely rewrite. I, I like the way that y'all positioned this here. Like, because that's the SimRush thing had a vibe like that. Yeah, I mean, there, there's options in there for a reason. It's what's going to sound the most like what you want it to sound like to fit the content that you're trying to write at the end of the day. So it's not about trying to achieve some SEO goal. It's really about what sounds like our voice and what fits what I'm writing. Oh, um, and here's the other thing that y'all, I'll show, I'm gonna show y'all the keep writing oh, beta. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're gonna switch over. I wanna bring Kate back. I know we're at time, but I do wanna bring Kate back and just kind of do a free for all quick answer some questions. So keep writing is also in beta. So you know how, again, you get stuck on something and you might have that outline and you're starting to like get the ideas going, but you're like, oh, what else could I say? What else could I possibly say about this? <laughs> It'll, it'll help you get there. Now, I write in some pretty esoteric topics, and I've definitely found the end of this sometimes. Like, I'm like, yeah, we have to... I noticed something the other day. We were writing a bunch of e-commerce-related stuff, and it was specifically about, like, eBay and drop shipping. And I was already at, like, 4,000 words, and I was like, it just kept giving me back the same stuff. And I'm like, you know what? My bot has also reached the end of the internet when it comes to, like, what else we could possibly say about this There's nothing else to say at this point, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, this one, this is pretty fun. And I know that this is, I, I treat it in the spirit of a beta because it's like, sometimes it gives me like, it's like, oh, I didn't think about that. Other times it gives me my lead back again. And I'm like, yeah, no, that wasn't helpful. <laughs> like, so do I just sit down and, and like content just like spits out? Like, no, I always, I'm editing it. It's a way for me to do things faster. Snippets helps a lot too. Like where it's like, you know, you're going to use the boilerplate. Don't type stuff over and over again that you always do the same. 
So I'm going to I'm going to turn this off here for a second. And if folks have like I have a few minutes, if y'all want to come on, I think we got Kate back. Y'all have questions about this for us. Someone asked a question about um, writer with more technical material and cybersecurity. That's what they wanted to know. It looks like. Ooh, uh, Ryan, Ryan Rachel, you let y'all take that. <laughs> Yeah, well, first off, put it to the test. You can go use askwriter.com right now if you want and go check it out. Um, I will say, you know, obviously technical content is always one of those more difficult things for AI and generative AI to get right right now. One of the solutions we see to this problem is we've got the ability to train our uh AI on your content as well, too. Uh -huh. We can continue to feed in your best blog posts, your longer form content, and we'll continue to learn, learn more about how you want to write, what you're saying, and what's relevant for you as well. So um, that is one way we're overcoming that challenge, where if there's not a ton of great cybersecurity content out there for it to be pulling in, <laughs> we can also feed it in there to fit your needs at the end of the day. So um, that would be probably the best way to be solving that right now. But I definitely say go put it to the test and see what you get. Mm -hmm. cool. I would say that's also an area where this is partly why we chose writer, you know, because we do work in these kind of technical areas. And I also work in a space where I need to keep voices straight. You know, I, I mean, I work with Aeon and Aeon's voice needs to stay Aeon's voice, you know, and um, yeah, Rachel saw that doll god. Um, yeah, <laughs> like, please. Right. Please. It was, it was, she was like, do all these things have to go in? Yes. <laughs> 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 she was like, we underpriced. <laughs> um, but, you know, it is part of like, I mean, and I know y'all, it's not all that it's always boring stuff. I mean, I know y'all also did some stuff with like Adore Me that's like really fun. Yeah. That's a fun voice. Like, so yeah. you can use the same AI tool, like the, the foundation of the platform to create super technical material about reinsurance, you know, if it's trained for that that you can to do things for a Walmart or to do things for an Adore Me or to do things for like, you can, the AI is only as good as like the human running it. Mm -hmm. exactly. And in some ways to me right now, I think this is the age of the editor more so than yeah. the writer. I hate to kind of writing. I, I mean, I also say I use the AI to do my typing, not my thinking. You know, I still have to think about what I'm doing and I still am responsible for the content that I publish. <laughs> I like that a lot, Mary, because that's what I do with my humans. So like I'll have an intern write an email for me, like a newsletter or something. And then I totally take it all apart. I really do. But just the fact that she wrote it for me gets me that jumping off point and it takes major stress. And like that fear of the blank page, I'm sure Ryan mm -hmm. will know, it's like, it's real, you know, so real for even for great writers like yourself. No. Yeah, it's really, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think also, Mary Ellen, you pointed this out, but like the prompt that you're giving the AI, like whether it be the ask or anything or something else, like you'll get better with it. And I think that also helps like, you know, you, you produce, you know, writing that that is actually great versus like, hey, this prompt was like not super specific or too specific and, and uh -huh. you, you want it. So I think that's important too. And it's, you know, it takes a little bit of time to learn, but you'll get there too. So if I have, were, if you didn't write good briefs, you're going to struggle with good prompts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's I that mean, garbage in garbage out. Like, exactly. yeah. yeah. So I have a question for uh -huh. Ryan and Rachel, which is, does, wouldn't it make sense to take your copy and then push a button and latelyify it and then publish it as social posts? It makes a heck of a lot of sense watching these two demos together right now, doesn't it? I know. It? We need to get our products teams on the phone and figure that out. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, look what I did here. I should have invited co-schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because they, so here's the thing, too, is I would say I know Writer has some functionality that does some of this. Certainly that blog post, you could ask it to write meta and you can ask it, give me 10 LinkedIn posts. It'll kind of spit that out. But I will say the fit for purpose, like the built for purpose aspect of Lately is so complimentary like they are really like i actually couldn't really live like without both of them mm -hmm. you know it's like they really do go together in that way it's like i looked i actually ask a lot more of writer like writers really asked to do something that's pretty like comprehensive for us as a content agency but like it's like when you think about tools right it's like lately is like this razor that i use to like mm -hmm. cut through like you know it's so specific it's like this it is not it's like, it just solves like, I'm trying to go, what is something that I have that I only use? It's like, just the way you use it. It just solves one problem, but it solves it so perfectly. Yeah. It solves Thank that you. problem perfectly. Writer, 
writer got me through i think some of somebody mentioned grammarly earlier and i know y'all integrate with grammarly I, we Grammarly is a security problem grammarly has a lot of issues um and i don't know that people are asking enough questions about how grammarly protects their data i mean mm. i know dan's hanging out if he's a, a cyber guy but it's like grammarly he's like and I, I think they're there's, it's just not, it's not, I have clients that don't allow Grammarly. I have lots of clients that actually don't allow Grammarly and writer actually is allowed. Yeah. I mean, we so, were purpose built from day one to not have the security issues and the data mm -hmm. issues that Grammarly has. And also say, you know, our foundational model is not storing our customers data either. We're not training our model on your content, which I know, you know, that manifesto earlier, like that's clearly a concern with some of these other new tools that have popped up, which is essentially you're feeding the beast and you're part of the product since you're getting that product for free right now. And that's not something that we're doing with the data that comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a similar um, manifesto from the beginning because, I mean, honestly, it's your content from, it's yours, right? I'm not actually redoing anything with it. I'm actually literally just lifting out the best parts of it. So it's pretty easy to um, navigate that. And, and especially with, you know, with all the thought, thought leadership, this is the year of thought leadership too, I think, uh -huh. which is like uh -huh. way to get on the fucking bandwagon, people. Hello. Um, but it's, people are just cottoning on to really how everybody in the entire company has to be on LinkedIn at least, right, in publishing. Uh -huh. And so those guidelines, that controls are coming up more and more as imperative with companies. And so we've we've actually added in, in our enterprise product like lots more ways to put the um, bumpers up on the, on the bowling lane for the AI so that it, it literally can't go off the rails. Oh, y'all should definitely talk then because I think that is also one of the things that writer does like <laughs> yeah. super well. Um, there's the whole compliance section. It's like things that we don't say. Like, <laughs> like Rachel and I were talking the other day about it. it's like forward looking statements and why we don't make them. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. so it's like, what? It's like, no, we don't talk about the future. You think about the, the thing is like past performance is not indicative of future returns. It's like you've ever seen that right. language. It's like that's the thing. And you have to flag. So I mean compliance teams, your compliance team will love you for this. Like this will allow you to put out more content. If you've if you're working one of those organizations where it takes you a while to get through this, like if you set this up right, compliance will love you. So I know Mindy's in here, she works in with insurance too. It's like, I mean, it's like this is the stuff you can teach people how to use this. Um and the other one, oh, Ashley said, I think what we're getting at right now is the idea that many of us use the writing process to discover what we think. I think asking AI to create an outline or content gives us something to assess and decide, do I agree or I think differently? Absolutely. That is that is one of those. You saw how like I generated that and I was like, no, that's not how I think about that. Right. Delete. Your mind. Um, it it kind of gives you this sort of average of what everything that's already out there that's been said. And so your job is to make sure that you say something different. Yeah, I think like the problem is, of course, is that unfortunately, the laziness, as we talked to before, and so many people are not willing to put a hum put the effort into it, you know, they, uh -huh. they don't want to make the decisions, or they don't have the knowledge and wisdom that you have to make those good decisions. As we're, we're seeing, I mean, this is the large, large conversation about like our democracy, basically. But, <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the really interesting thing is like, there's no desire to do the work. Um, and so, I mean, we can't combat that. It's, that's a bigger problem. But in the meantime, when we can show people how little effort it takes to put into it when the results you get and how happy you are, like, it's really incredibly validating to me, Mary Ellen, because this is a huge challenge for us as a company. And to see someone like you actually embrace what we're doing without anyone telling you to do it. Um, oh, by the way, they didn't pay me to do this, just for the record. Like, yeah. I stalked Kate, not she didn't stalk me. Like, <laughs> I'm going to take like, this video, though. Like, I'm going to play it for every investor I can. I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. ask you for no, content and run it through my own AI. But yeah, yeah. And, and I think there's also the fear about it taking your job. I'm going to openly address this because this is coming out. This is going to take our jobs. It's like, y'all, if yeah, it's yeah. going to take my job, could it hurry up? Because I am Damn. really slammed. Like, <laughs> so we are, Damn. we are having our biggest month ever as an agency. We can grow as fast as we can onboard people. Like my, I am not, I do not feel, I do think it is changing our jobs. The message I gave even to our content team, you know, because we're a content agency and my writers and my editor, I told my writers, like, you will soon be all be content marketing managers. I don't know that there will be a job for just a writer here very long like I feel like by the end of the year 
you're going to be more about the decisions around the content planning. You're going to be doing research. You're going to be thinking about voice and you're going to be figuring out that balance between what did the machine do? What did I do? How do I get the right? It is the age of the editor. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, a capital E editor who knows the brand, like you can't just sit down and type and think you're going to hand it to somebody else to fix like that's over. Right. I mean, there is no those roles are collapsing and I'm old enough that, you know, as a newspaper journalist and I remember when they started squeezing kind of the copy desks, you know, in this way, too. And I was a copy editor. And I mean, it was like, oh, OK, we're going to get rid of these layers of editing. But in the end, we, we do still proof. We still proof. But proofing is so much faster with AI. It's yeah. not perfect. It's not perfect. It won't catch urine, you know, or whatever that was. It won't catch your, like, what was your example? You know, it won't catch feces instead of VCs. Like, like, it can't do all of that. I think it's going to get better, right? Because contextually, it's like, well, why? first of all, she would never say feces. She would say shit. Kate, did you mean to say Thank shit? You. Like, you know me. <laughs> that's how it's going to catch that. It's not going to catch it because it now knows what VC means. It's going to catch it because they were like, hey, did you mean to say shit? <laughs> yeah, no. one comment that i do have to hop unfortunately after this yeah. i do want to just say yeah i mean we view this as a tool this is not here to replace anybody it is here to augment and support and be a part of your writing process google docs didn't replace anybody and we stopped using typewriters and more on computers now like that's all this process it's just an evolving process but it's just one more tool to add to your arsenal to help you do your job better and mm -hmm. that's kind of how our viewpoint is hopefully coming across as we do all this. Yeah. And by the way, now we are we are using typewriters again, but we're spending eight hundred dollars on old ones and yes. using and and it there. <laughs> I stayed at an Airbnb last week that had I, I went over there to do some writing and like do something, and there was a there was a typewriter at the desk, and I was like, "This is adorable." It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's yeah, a good point, though. Yeah. It's cyclical, right? Yeah. All right. Well, just like you probably used to use in torn tables, and you don't have the electronic mixing, you're just like. Um, I thank you all, all three of you for joining. Um, also, I think some of you were asking about trials and stuff like that. I'm gonna send the on-demand version of this later. And so you will have access to that. And I've also got links like these guys, guys were both all super generous. They actually gave us like some kind of nicely enhanced trial. Check it out, poke around, you know, as people who came to this webinar. Um, bless 55 of you for staying 13 minutes late. Um, <laughs> like, so um, send us, if you have questions, I know Kate, I saw you drop your LinkedIn, you know, Rachel, Ryan, you'll drop your stuff in, but I will send that email give me give me till monday probably i don't know even with the ai i don't know if i could get to the get the email out the door today but i'll get you an email it'll have a trial on it it'll have this on demand version and have some other resources that y'all can all check out but this is fun this is like a fun time don't be scared of this tech make make friends with it and use it in a wise way and no you're not going to lose your job so. <laughs> like, yeah. Thank you so. for having us. This was amazing. This yeah, thank is you so much. We want to be a part of. All right. So. Glad cool. to be. All right. Awesome. Thank y'all. Bye. Happy Friday. Bye. Mm -hmm.